Welcome back to Hollywood Buzz. Today we're joined with the international superstar Marilyn Monroe who will help us in our discovery to identify some misconceptions about women in society. Accompanying us today are the well-renowned Leo McKinstry, Kay Leader and Albert Tran. Joined with... Joined with Leo McKinstry, a writer from the Daily Mail, as he is about to attempt to get through Mrs. Monroe to discover her side of the story and insight to the media's perception of Marilyn as a sex symbol. Hi Marilyn, Leo McKinstry from the Daily Mail. You are considered to be the biggest sex symbol to come out of Hollywood in over 50 years. Do you think your relations with Joe DiMaggio and your fame had an impact on this perception? I know that people had different opinions about me from when I was very young. I guess it just followed me into my career. I can't change the fact that people look at me and think I'm such a symbol, but I can acknowledge that Mr. McKintry knew I was a famous Hollywood actress. And if he knows that, then he should understand that I don't particularly care what he thinks. Joe always disliked my acting and fame. It was probably because of the comments and perceptions people had. All Joe wanted to do was get involved, but he began to get controlling and became mentally cruel. So I called our marriage off. We hadn't even been married for a year. You stated in before the USO tour, I didn't want to give up my career and that's what Joe wanted me to do most of all. Was this because Joe wanted you to be a respectful housewife instead of displaying your body? That's absolutely true. He didn't like the fame or glamour and I very much enjoy the spotlight. I think there was something wrong with our marriage from the beginning. Why do you think the public would have these opinions about you? Honestly, I think that some of the films I was included in and some of the jobs I have been given have put my body on display in a negative way, but I don't regret doing the new calendar or my roles. It's my job, I get paid, I love acting, and if I have to pay the price, whether the public considers me a positive role model for brave young girls or not, I think they learn to come to an opinion based on what the media shares, and I fail to believe that Mr McIntyre is telling the truth. So then you would say that you're a positive role model, even after you've included yourself in acts of public display and provocative roles? That photo shoot skyrocketed my fame. It kick-started my career and I don't regret it at all. I was young and unemployed. I needed the money. I even used a different name, Mona Munro. I had paid off my car and the benefits over the media's outrage was worth it. I did everything I could to make it as an actress. And although my path wasn't the best, I still made it in Hollywood and I'm an international star. Thanks, Marilyn. Anything else to add, Leo? No, that's all for me today. Throughout your career in film, you have repeatedly played the damsel in distress. Yes, I was in fact. I love those roles to act. Do you think people have come to the opinion of you being sexualized and belittled as a female? Uh, well, I don't think too many people think of me like that. I mean, I get why due to some of the roles I played, but I try to ignore it. I have a lot of chaos in my life as it is, with my colleagues and my family. Adding the entirety of the public to my list makes my job quite overwhelming. But as a whole, I think that everyone that apparently considers me to sexualize myself to the audience are males. And of course they think like that. Sorry, can I just jump in here and ask, would you say the sole cause of the media's opinion of you is males then? Exactly. I try to promote myself for the younger girls and create fun, playful characters in my roles. I don't go out on stage to show just as much skin as possible. That's ridiculous. I'm a lady, thank you. Did you consider yourself to or try to be a body of empowerment for females? Why or why not? Of course I did, to be an internationally known face and not promote something positive, especially in the time and place that I lived. To stand up for the rights of women is the least I can do. I think the alternative way I carried out my job, encouraging younger girls to be brave and proud of themselves and what they chose to wear was a pace in the right direction. But you could have encouraged education and intelligence among girls, so why not do that? I could have done a variety of things to spark the change, but there were other incredible women doing that and this acting and fashion was within my reach. You say, I knew I belonged to the public and to the world, not because I was talented or even beautiful, but because I had never belonged to anything or anyone else. Did you say this because in your childhood you continuously moved in and out of foster homes? I didn't move around very often as a child, and there have been many times where I have felt out of place and quite honestly unloved. I honestly believe that because I never truly belonged to anyone but myself, I belonged to the public. Do you ever consider the effects of your past? All the time. I find myself thinking about why I'm the way I am now and how much I have learned from my childhood. Many people, including myself, consider me a female rights activist, for example. I don't think everyone is educated on what really can happen on a child and how it can scar them from life because I know what happened to me did. I see. We asked an actress named Kay Leader, who was a student while you went to some acting classes to help out, to come down and tell us about the time when you, when you acted out a moment in your life. Thanks for having me. Basically, the way I would describe it is that as she described her clothes, what she heard, she began crying, sobbing, until at the end of it, she was really devastated. Was this the real Marilyn Monroe? An insecure, shy, 29-year-old woman? Would you say this is a fair comment, given what you were acting out? 
Like I said earlier, one of my biggest aims in life is to educate others on what was happening in my life and how it affected me. In saying this, I found myself at many times remembering when I was treated horribly and like dirt by many different men. And these traits have given me the perspective I needed in order to try and make a difference in the world. While I was growing up, I was insecure and shy, and this feeling being repeated itself when situations similar to it occurred later on too. I'll admit though, throughout time, I have been exposed to a lot of hate, where people have said that I am an attention seeker, and that I am insecure, but I hide that through the characters I play. How does that make you feel? I can understand why they might think that, but I don't think it's fair to say that I put on a face and don't show the world who I really am. I've always tried to be quite open with my story and tried to teach girls who they want to be without fear of being judged by society and specifically men. Thank you very much for that. I'm joined with Albert Tran, a famous historian. In the renowned film The Seven Year Itch, you play a very sexualized character. Yes, my role as the gorgeous blonde model assists in an affair with a husband in the movie and is often depicted very provocatively. What were your initial thoughts in starring in a film like this? I accepted the role just as another one of my work-related opportunities. I didn't think much of it. It is the same as if a sports star were to play the game. So you think you're a good role model for other women in this depiction? I definitely do not think my character within this movie is a bad representation of women or how women should act. If anything, I believe it allows women to learn to embrace their gender and love themselves, just as I learnt to do so growing up in the industry. What were your motives and did they have any relation to your engagement as a feminist? By being involved in a major movie like this, The Seven Year Itch, and playing a significant character, I guess a side of me wanted to challenge a stereotype that women must be restricted to traditional roles and prove to other women that everyone should strive for who they want to be and encourage women to do so as well. You once mentioned that Hollywood is a place where they'll pay you $1,000 for a kiss and 50 cents for your soul. Do you think the opinion of men had an impact on how you acted as a feminist? I think men were very dominant and had a vital part in how I wanted to portray myself, but I believe I stayed strong through my career and didn't let them take away the person I am. Females together understand in society the rules and upholdings, and without that, I don't think I would be myself. Thank you to our guest Marilyn Monroe for starring in this week's podcast and allowing our listeners to gain an understanding about some of the misconceptions women through time have experienced. Join us next week on Hollywood Buzz. Wow.